let's begin. Let me share the screen. I was hoping more people would sign on, but we'll have to do. Uh, today we're covering Lab 3, Microscopic Basics. Hopefully you've read the textbook in Chapter 3 through the end of the section on compound light microscopy. You will need this material for today's lab as well as next week's lab. Notice next week we only have one lab. You know, it's too bad I've got that scheduled for Tuesday because that's when I'm going to have the, uh, the jury duty. Oh well, uh, like I said, I'll, I'll pre-record this and uh, I will have the lecture at 6.30. And the lab, if you have any questions, you can ask them at 6.30. And then also, um, I'll be logging in at 6.30 for the uh, lab. And if there's no questions, I'll just answer questions at that time. And then... Uh, if there's no questions after 15 minutes, I'll log out. So uh, whenever we only have one lab meeting, generally that lab will be on Tuesday. And then on Thursday, I will be there at 6.30 to answer questions. But after questions are answered or at 6.45, I'll log off. So if you have any questions, make sure you're on between 6.30 and 6.45. All right, let's go on to um, our topic today. Lab module three, microscope basics. I'll put that down there. Uh, you need to read the lab module and the textbook chapter three through the end of the section on compound light microscopy before you finish this lab. Uh, you're not physically going to be using a microscope because the class is online. However, a completion of this lab module, students should be able to locate and name the parts of a compound light microscope along with describing the functions of these parts. Calculate the total magnification for each objective lens used. Know the guidelines for focusing specimens with different objectives meaning there's the scanning objective, the low objective, the high objective, the oil immersion objective, and you should know how to use them, and you should begin with the scanning lens. Estimate, be able to estimate the size of a specimen when seen at different magnification powers. So if you see something under the microscope, by the field, the view of that microscope, you should be able to give an estimate of the size. And this lab will make you familiar with how to do that. Uh, understand the rules for proper microscope care and be able to define the terms associated with the microscope. Any question about any of that? All right, memorize the names and the functions of these parts of the microscope which are listed here, that's the one, the ocular lenses, the two, the objective lenses, and it's all of these, because that's the rotating nose piece. And then just come down here, it's got the numbers, the mechanical stage, the stage clip. So this is the stage three, the clip is four. The clip holds the slide and makes the slide move with the stage. The iris diaphragm lever uh, number six and the condenser number seven, they're together on the microscope. Um, actually, that looks like it's the lever right there. And that's the lever controlling uh, what the size of the iris diaphragm is and then the condenser is this part underneath there. Uh, know what the coarse focus adjustment knob is and the fine focus knob. 
on our microscopes. You can't really see it well. There we go. The small one is the fine focus. The big knob is the coarse focus. Uh, the light switch power button. Uh, is 10 lighter? Did I miss 10? Sorry, I did get 10. Uh, I thought it was on 11. Right there. And then that's the rheostat for controlling how much light is coming through the lamp. And they don't call it the rheostat, they call it the light intensity dial, but I'll call it the rheostat. And then the illuminator, that's the light, the lamp. You should be familiar with this table, but yeah, you should know this table. You should do the, know the names of the different objective lenses. And generally, uh, I call them by their power. Like the scanning lens is the 4x objective lens. The low power is the 10x objective lens. The high power, the 40x objective lens. And the oil immersion lens is the 100x uh, power lens, or the 100x objective lens. And I tend to call them by this because the low power is not the lowest, the 4x is, and the high power is not the highest, because the 100x is. So just know that. Uh, you should know the magnification for our objective lenses. And on our microscopes, the ocular lens uh, magnifies 10 times whatever the objective lens is magnifying. So the total magnification of ours would be 40x for the 4x lens, 100x for the 10x lens, 400x for the 40x lens, and 1000x for the 100x lens. Now, not all microscopes are this way. It's just that all microscopes are this way in our lab. There are some microscopes which have an ocular lens magnifying 20 times, in which case the total magnification for the 100x lens would not be 1,000 times. It would be 2,000 times. Some lenses, like uh, ocular lenses for like, like children's microscopes, those are the only ones I've ever seen it that way. Um, the total magnification could be less than 10x in the ocular lens. And like I said, I've never seen that except on a child's microscope. The point is the ocular lens can differ but all of the ocular lenses at Clark College magnify 10 times. Any question about any of that? And the total magnification is just the ocular lens times the objective lens. You should know the depth of field for the scanning lens or the 4X lens is the deepest. Let me get you something so you can see. So when you're looking at an object under the 4X lens, you have the deepest depth of field. So you can see the entire object. As you go up in power, the depth of field will decrease until you go up to the highest power of the 100X objective lens where the depth of field would be very narrow. And instead of seeing an object, all you're going to see is one plane of that object. Any question about any of that? The field of view is similar. The field of view is how much you can see under the microscope. So when you look at something under a microscope, you can see a field of view. And you'll get the largest field of view with the 4x objective lens. And as you increase the objective lens, that field of view will get smaller and smaller and smaller until you only have a very small field of view with the 100x objective lens. 
that means that the 4x objective lens is the easiest to use because you can see the greatest depth of field and the most of your slide and the 100x objective lens is the hardest to use because you have the least depth of field and the smallest field of view. Any question about any of that? Like I said, you should know this table. You should also note that when you're looking at an image under a microscope, not only is it magnified, but it is also inverted and reversed. So the E is magnified, but it is inverted and reversed. Any question about any of that? You should note with the iris diaphragm that it uh, can open and close. The diameter should be closed down to allow the amount of light that you require for your objective lens. The 4X lens has the largest field of view and you want a cone of light coming up equal to your field of view. So the 4X lens should have the iris diaphragm fairly open so that everything is lit in your field of view. And then as you go up in power with the objective lens, you need to close down the iris diaphragm to shrink the cone of light coming up to the size of your field of view. If you don't do that, you will not have, well, Kohler illumination, what does that mean? You will not have the best uh, optics. You will not have the best, what's the resolution? So you want to close down the iris diaphragm as you're going up in power of the objective lens. And that will increase the contrast as well as your resolution for what you're viewing. And that'll make it easier to see. When you first use a microscope, you should start with the 4X objective lens. Use the course focus adjustment knob to slowly raise the stage and bring the object into focus. Carefully adjust the focus with the course focus knob and then use the fine focus adjustment knob to perfectly focus the object. Once you have the object in perfect focus with the fine focus, do not ever use the course focus knob unless you're staying with the 4X objective lens. The reason is, from now on, you should only use the fine focus knob because the lenses of the microscopes we have are parafocal, meaning when you move from one lens to another, the object should be in close to perfect focus. It may not be perfect focus. You can use the, the fine focus to make it perfect focus, but it should be parafocal. Another thing, when you look at an object under a microscope, you want to move the object to the center of your field of view before you go up to the next higher objective lens. If you don't do that, and you're looking at an object off on the edge, and then you uh, increase the objective, the field of view will be smaller and you'll no longer have the object under the microscope. You won't be able to see it. And so what you do is you move your specimen, the thing you're looking at, into the center of your field of view. And then you move up in power to the next objective lens. And every time you go up in power to the next objective lens, you always remove the object 
you're looking at to the center of your field of view. All right, any question about any of that? You repeat step nine whenever you switch from one objective to the next higher power objective. Of course, if you're going down in objective lens, you don't have to do that. Uh, the oil immersion lens requires the use of oil. If you don't use oil on the oil immersion lens, it will be no better than the 40x lens. Oil has the same refractive index as glass, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. That allows more light to be gathered by the oil uh, immersion lens. And if you don't use the oil, some of the light will refract when it comes out of the glass slide and will refract so that it will not be gathered by the uh, oil immersion lens. So oil increases the resolution simply by keeping the light from refracting away from the lens so that the lens can gather more light. Any question about the use of oil? Of course, whenever you use oil on a microscope, you then have to coil, clean the oil with lens paper. Lens paper is specifically treated paper that has the wood fibers removed from the paper. So all paper has wood fibers in it, and the wood fibers would scratch the lens. And as the lens uh, is expensive, and when you get scratches on it, you won't be able to see very well. And so we only clean the lens with lens paper because it's specially treated paper that has no wood fibers in it. Any question about any of that? All right, so read about troubleshooting. I'm going to go on and talk about the activities. You're doing activity one. Note that you're not going to perform any of these activity with the microscope, but you do need to use the table below. We filled it in for you. And you're expected to know the information contained in the table and how to use the formula in point five below to get the numbers of the table. And if I ever ask you questions about this table, I will provide the table for you. All right? So the 4x lens, you can see under the lens a field of view of 4.5 millimeters. That's 4,500 micrometers, and this is just a thousand times the millimeters. The 10x magnification lens has a diameter of the field of view. 1.8 millimeters. The 40x lens has a diameter of 0.45 millimeters and the 100x lens has a diameter of 0.18 millimeters. If you know the size of your field of view you should be able to get an estimate of the size of your object. For example, if you're using the 100x oil immersion lens and the object takes up half of your field of view, what is the size of that object? Come on people, what's the half of 0.18? This is your lab. 0 0.09. Yeah, 0 0.09 would be the size of that object. You have to get good at estimating the size of the specimens you observe. And there is a question about that in the worksheet. I think there's only one question about that, where you have to give an estimate of something. All right, 
Uh, objective two, you're not going to perform that activity, but you are expected to know how to do it by doing the virtual exercise of this activity and completing the questions at the end of the document. Um, I think we have a uh, virtual online microscope, which will help you do this too, observing prepared slides. So work through the procedure, read through it, and work through the, the uh, worksheet. Uh, waking mounts activity three, you're not gonna be tested on that activity, so you can skip that. You don't need to actually know that. You're not going to be handling real microscopes, but you are expected to know how to correctly handle and store a microscope. So read through these steps prior to storing your microscope. You should know the terms of the microscope. And then do the laboratory exercise. There's videos for how to use a microscope, how to put oil on a microscope. And then there's a virtual microscope. I'm not sure that's the newest one. I'll have to check a look at my worksheet. Uh, and uh, these should be on your worksheet. And then practice naming the parts of a microscope. You can go to this, and I believe that's a game that you can do the naming of the parts. And then answer the questions. Yeah, I've changed the question. So state how many cells fit across the circle under the oil immersion lens. Okay, so answer the questions. Don't answer them here. Answer them in the worksheet. which this is the worksheet. You've got a link to it on Canvas. And there's the correct virtual uh, microscope link. Uh, many of our virtual labs, oops, maybe that isn't the newest one. Let me check my other one. And if they have flash, it doesn't work. And yeah, maybe I should check that to make sure I've got the right one up. It looks like this is the right link. And I'll make sure it's on your worksheet. It does take a time to load. This is taking a long time to load. Up oh, there it goes. All right. So you need to click each of these links here. You really don't have to take the test, uh, but this helps you reading it. And then Explore allows you to virtually work with a microscope. Click on the box, grab a sample slide. We'll take a head look at the letter E. And it's loading the letter E. It's not in focus. You have to use the coarse focus for getting it in focus. And then the fine focus, etc. And then you can switch objective lenses. All right, any question about any of the lab? Like I said, I'll check to make sure I've got the correct worksheet up. If not, use this link that's on the, uh, the um, for the virtual lab, use the one that's on the, uh, the uh, lab manual. Okay, any questions? If not, I will stay here until at least 7.30 to answer questions. Uh, once the 
last student logs off, I'll leave, but I will promise to be here until 7.30 to answer questions, and uh, um, get started on the lab. Oh, and also remember to pick a topic for your infectious disease project, and then send it to me to clear it, and I'll tell you whether you can choose that infectious disease or not, okay? All right, so go ahead and get started.